Recently, a customer sent me pictures of his Tesla 3 after backing into a truck. From my experience, it looked like something I can fix. I contacted him and we set it up. All right, this is what I'm doing today. I accepted this because I've done worse and uh, this definitely looked right up my alley. In my alley it is. I have studied for many years in used car lots, um, making lots of mistakes to get to a point where I can now be on someone's driveway, work on their black car, and do something I've really never done before since all damage is different in some way or another. You always bring confidence into these repairs from past repairs. Um, you look at damage and you say, okay, I've done that before. Okay, I've done that before. I've done that before. And it just kind of all adds up. In this case, um, the area that is always difficult and, and uh, different each time is how it's creased along the edge right here. That is the seam where the outer layer and the inner layer are pressed together. So this particular curl right here, right next to the edge, that would be tough. And um, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to handle it. But from previous jobs, I picked up some tricks. And I was going to try it on this one. And a lot of the times when you're working in those areas, you don't get a second chance at them. You, have, you make one good pass of a particular trick you're going to use. And if it works, there you go. And if I raise that curl enough, I'll have a chance at this part. This is the beginning of the seam. That line right there is protruding outward, and I have to actually tap that back down. Hard to do when you're up against the layer on the other side. These are the areas that I prep the customer that it may not be perfect, may have a few flaws or wiggles in the reflection. Sure enough, this customer was fine with it because the alternative, remember, is replacement. It was a $5,000 quote they got from the auto body shop to cut this piece out of the car and replace it and repaint the entire rear quadrant. And repainting is not a good option. You lose all the factory applied paint and hardened clear coat, which is amazing. Now for this repair, I had to remove the subwoofer and the inside the right quarter panel. So here's a quick um, remove and install of some of the trim. All right, these are the, some of the main buttons that you're using you're working with in this Tesla. So I usually take out this trim right here, first to come out. Second is gonna be this one up inside here, up on the top. Over here, you're gonna find this kind of bracket. Try and do this with one hand. So now, what they do sometimes is they glue this side because this is the charge port side. So you really can't pull that out of there. But this stuff is so flexible, I don't have any problems with bending it. Um, you know, we do that all the time in our trade. So I'm going to bend this down. And then while I have it bent down, I'm peeling this back. And it releases fine. See? So now i got a straight shot at getting that subwoofer out. And the subwoofer is just two bolts and two nuts. You don't even have to unplug it. You literally just lift it out of the way and move it on its side. And I just kind of strap it down uh, out of the way. Once it's out of the way, it's wide open to go inside there. But your tooling, it's got to really cover all that area and leverage off that gap. Not easy. But that's later. For now, this is what I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to take out the bulk of it with my slot bar. A great setup with a steel tab to lift out a lot of the bulk real fast. The drill does all the work. It lifts it in a way that is just amazing. Check out this pull. I'm <laughs> just having some fun. that pull oh wow just brought that whole bottom out these steel tabs are just killing this tesla quarter pan all right well that's me promoting my glue pulling um, equipment glue pulling is fantastic 
But in dents like this, it only takes you so far. And I think that's really important for people to know who are watching this, that glue pulling is fantastic. I use it all the time. I'm using it in this repair, but at, there's a certain point where it's worthless and it's just a waste of time to continue with it. At some point, you need tooling to work on this type of damage. And to see lately, at least on social media, you'll see a picture from way over here saying, all glue pulling. When you have to see the details, not from way over here, you wanna get up close and you wanna see it in video. So to really um, research paintless dent repair, don't look for pictures. Uh, there's a lot of flaws that can be hidden in pictures and you're not really shown the true story as to how they got to these certain areas. And I, I can tell you many times, if you have pictures taken from way over here and they're talking about glue pulling, they're not showing you everything and you really need to know everything. The last thing you wanna be doing is trying a particular technique and not getting anywhere and wondering what's going on, why? It's because you're, you're listening to advice from people showing you their repairs from over here. <laughs> you don't want that. You want video up close. You want to see details as to how it's done. And it's not all the time glue pulling. It is some incredible tooling. I mean, many areas of the repair need tooling. For example, right here, this is a body line that's just crushed. You need to lift that out with tools. To do that with glue, oh my gosh, like this small little area here, Glue pulling that for three hours doesn't make sense to try and get it perfect when a tool could get in there and do it in 10, 15 minutes. So your tooling skills have a lot to do with PDR. So not necessarily um, trying one particular technique. It's always, in my opinion, comes down to your tooling and how you manipulate it. The key is the tooling. And this is what I'm going over in the membership page right now for members to know about the tooling, how to fabricate, how to bend the tooling, how to make the ends work for you every single time. And that's what I teach in the membership page is how to be reliant on your tools and not reliant on some catalog or some group of tools that you're waiting for them to come out with the right shape. You make uh, your own. This is why I really recommend just using regular sockets. They're designed for heavy torque and you can really change up the uh, the way it goes, you know, it goes in your hand, whether it's in a, you know, 10 inches like this or 20 inches, you can change it up so much. So I highly recommend sockets. Look at this. I am torquing that body line out with one hand while I'm holding the camera, just because I have it set up just right inside there. Now I don't know of another handle system that could do that, and that's why I stick with sockets. And the, and the rod I was using was too short, so I have an extension in there. <laughs> so there you go. This is information I have on the membership page, which is really valuable. Teaching people how to set up their tools to where you can tackle any job just because you're not just buying what's out there, you're making it. After you push up the metal, you have to knock it back down. And these skills you have to have how to knock down highs and waves and metal and really not dimple it up because that's how you create a lot more work for yourself. This particular handle uh, I'm holding is called the slapper tapper and it creates a vibration that's excellent for knocking down a wave and making it flat without dimpling it. I'm on to the second day here. This is where I'm at right now with this guy. Look at the busyness, but it's not as crazy as it looks. If you look deep into those lows, you'll see that they're wide. The waves are wide. It's all manageable. Nothing super tight and ugly. And that's what you want at this stage is you want it. And what's happening here, is when it gets this flat and you're knocking down the slightest wave, you're moving metal up here. You're moving it around. So don't think that the slightest crown 
is not worthy of going after it. Once you knock down anything that's high, you're, it's, it's going places because it's so flat now, you're sending it. See, here's some original impact showing up now. That's what you want to do is you want to expose the original impact marks and then take them out in the end. I'm saving this for later because I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. But I like the way the rest is turning out. nice and flat I can now get into those wrinkles and when you push on any wrinkle when it's nice and flat like this uh, your push stays and you can really build this quick I'm saving this for last to see how it turns out I told the customer this is where the flaws were gonna be but um, everything else is gonna turn out nice so far it's coming together edge right here I've been saving till the end I'm gonna get my big steel tab on there and just start pulling out that edge see if it comes out once again I love glue pulling but it only takes you so far and in this case Trying to lift out a curl on the edge of double metal, not going to happen, even with the best of the glue pulling equipment. I simply pulled out my dent dial, my 35 heavy, and I got right in that double metal and pushed it out no problem, just like I'm showing in that Mini Cooper I did. Did the same thing here, just curled it right back out. All right, all done with this Tesla 3 right rear quarter panel. You know, I've been working pretty solid through this pandemic. And well, what, am I, what am I having it on for? Um, and it's these kinds of jobs that are keeping me busy. You know, one thing I wanted to do on this particular job is I didn't want to drill a hole. So check it out. You know, I've, I um, did not drill a hole here. Don't recommend that. This is, you know, water's coming down in there. You don't want any holes along here. And then up inside the wheel well, this no holes there and just in case as we'll show you from the access I had no holes here either you'd see some daylight if I had so there you go no holes and here is my result What's tough about this is that I, I couldn't push in this direction. You know, usually if I had some kind of access here, I could work this angle, but I didn't. But it still came out real nice and real happy with it. You can see the minor imperfections, but the original paint, clear coat. What's really cool about this uh, car is it's electric. The paint is electrostatically attached. Uh, to the metal which makes it amazing and it just won't crack it's amazing so you can work out some really bad dents in teslas all because of the paint this is fantastic for staying on and working with so i love these cars to work on i love to fix uh, damage like this if you have it on your tesla if the body shop says they have to paint it or replace that quarter panel it's a big deal when they do that we can save your car from the body shop with these kinds of results keeping your factory finish thanks for watching really appreciate your support online this is sal with dent experts youtube channel fixing the right quarter of a tesla 3 thanks for watching